So we were talking about this alphabets or varana. We, we also call it varana mala or akshara mala. There is a difference between aksharam and varana. Um, Generally, you can assume that aksharam means a syllable and uh, varana is like a base sound. And there is distinction. That's again a study of shiksha. Shiksha, I think you know, the shiksha is a branch of study of pronunciation. The, no, originally, the study in ancient times was to was focusing on the Vedas it's because the Veda Vedas focusing on what is the meaning of life or universe, not only human life, everything around in the world. This is just my understanding I'm putting forth. You may have different opinions, but um, so, what is the purpose of human life? Ultimately, what is the goal? To seek the the reality, you know, or the ultimate goal of a human being or any being. So, the for that the study was study of Vedas uh, was recommended to the students ultimate goal was to study the Vedas and understand the life and um, march or towards the spiritual goals yeah. that was the goal so but to assist that to supplement that there are other auxiliary branches of studies so one is the study of pronunciation which is called shiksha other is grammar Vakaranam. Then there are other uh, branches supplementing it, like uh, mm -hmm. there are six auxiliary branches Shiksha, Vakaranam, Kalpa, Jyotisha, and a uh, few other things. So those assist or help uh, in understanding or augmenting the study of the Vedas. So this this part, this Aksharam, Varana, this or what we are talking, this is the um, Shiksha part, the pronunciation. So here Aksharam and Varana, these are there, and we studied the uh, I, etc., the Swaras and the Venjanas, how they should be pronounced, and there is Thanam and Karanam. Important. And there are if you go deeper and deeper, and what is the prayatna, how much effort should be put, those are there, part of Shiksha, which I have shared the links, you can go through it separately. Now, coming back, coming to this Anuswara and Visarga. Anuswara and Visarga, these are two different sounds, and this these are not Swaras and Venjanas also. Now, what we see here, 13 Swaras or vowels and 33 Vinjanas in all 40, how much? 33, 13, 46. 46 total is uh, Varanas or Aksharas. They are there. But in addition to that, Shiksha also recognizes additional few more sounds. These are basically sounds or frequencies. Uh, in addition to this 46, Anuswara Visarga, these are additional sounds. And not only that makes it 48, but other than that, there are more sounds which are not right now relevant in our studies, not day to day, which we, those sounds are heard, but we don't notice them very much and very frequently or we ignore them. So there are additional uh, Varanas are also there in the Shiksha Granta, so totally it goes up to like 64 total. So here, Anuswara Visarga, there is two symbols represented, Anuswara represented by a dot, uh, and the Visarga is represented by two dots. Now, what is the Anuswara sound? 
Anuswara, as the name indicates here, Anu and Swara. There is a Swara is the is the is related to Swara. Swara is vowel. So Anu means Jan Anu. This is a prefix in Sanskritam, generally used as a uh, to mean following okay? something which follows something. For example. Hmm, Anugamanam. Anugamanam means following, uh, walking behind somebody. Anugaman. Uh, similarly, here, Anuswara means this This sound follows a swara. Anuswara, the name itself indicates, the word itself indicates, the sound of Anuswara, this sound follows a swara. It never follows a venjanam. No, that is the meaning. Now, how is that to be pronounced and how is that to be represented in a Devanagari script? Again, we can use any script, but in Devanagari, after a swara, it is represented as a dot or a circle, small circle on top of uh, swara. So, this is the Anuswara. Uh, so this am, when we say am, am is not anuswara. That ap, if, when we say am, there is a a component there. After that, there is a n mm, mm component. When we say am, actually what we are doing here, we are saying like this, am. And I uh, assume, presume that you all, you know what is this what means. This is a, there is a ma here. Uh, this is ma. And this ma has two components in it, right? Ma plus a. All these what we have written here, they are they are not actually pure venjanam here, because a pure venjanam cannot be pro pro pronounced uh, independently. It needs the help of a, a venjanam added to it. It cannot be pronounced on its own. So, but in writing, in the script, it can be represented in Devanagari. It is represented with a, with a, what is it called, slant line at the bottom of this, these symbols, each symbol. So when we actually write this ma, this actually contains the venjanam part, which is this, this ma. I'm trying to pronounce it, though, uh, technically, it's not about possible to pronounce it independently. Ma. Ma, I'm trying to shorten it, and then there is a. So together, when I pronounce it, it becomes ma. This ma, as you can notice it, that ma. When I say at the end of that ma, pronouncing there is a a sound there. Ma, ma. It is not just this sound which is not possible to pronounce by itself. So we need to add a swara to every venjanam to bring it out, to express it, uh, to be heard. Otherwise, they won't come out. That is why they are called venjanam. They need the help of a swara. Whereas a swara doesn't need a help of a venjanam or anything else. A swara can be pronounced independently, whereas a venjanam needs help of a swara all the time to be pronounced, to be heard. Yes. So here, in how do we represent the script, all the venjanas? Uh, so we just add a, in Devanagari, we just add a slant line at the bottom. So we get this, for example, this k, actual venjanam is just this k. And similarly, all, all this, you just add the slant line at the bottom. So that makes it a pure venjanam represented in the script. But pronunciation, Technically, technically, we can't, though we can try to make it short. Though at the end, the short a is coming out actually. When we say k, the short a, short a is there. Very, very, it is not a full matra, it is maybe half matra. Okay? Full matra is like a. Like a when you say k, the short, short, shortened a uh, or the swara is added, then only this can come out. So that is true for all the Vinjanas. Now similarly, 
uh, we are talking about this anuswara when we say anuswara 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 means following aswara when we say a and how do we say anuswara now is it am but when we say am it becomes like this am we are saying a and we are saying this sound not the anuswara sound anuswara sound is different it is not ma or even the short ma am am this is not a anuswara so anuswara with the a is not notated like this but it still it cannot be really pronounced so if you have something following it some other uh, swara or avanjanam following it then it is it can be heard properly for example let's say on this word is sh and then we can say how do you say this on sh on sh is that it is not am sh it is not am sh it is not like this this is different this is ma but here there is a difference in the a difference in the pronunciation like with anuswara and ma am sh and there is a sh that a uh, that is which is a nasal so uh, that nasal sound is mm, pure nasal sound is anuswara what is it? this ma is also nasal nasal right that is what we did we see it last time uh, all these last column of this last column uh, of these five groups here uh, five rows nga ya na nama these are nasal sounds however uh, no one thing to be noted what is the what is the sthanam of this first row ka kha ga gha nga that we saw last time ka what is the sthanam kantha uh, kantha so this nga that means this is in the first row here so that is also kantha that is a throat that is a sthanam however the nga has a mixture of kantha and nose is a nasal also and it is a kantha also so to it needs the help of uh, two parts one is the kantha and the other is the nose the air has to come out through the kantha it starts there uh, it is constricted there and the air also has to pass through nose for pronouncing nya similarly nya here what is the sthanam for this row cha 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 nya talu ha uh, talu or that palate so nya also has this palate and the uh, nose okay. then we have this na na has a murdha and in mixture with nose again na and na similarly na danta and the uh, tooth and the more uh, nose and ma ma you can experience that very clearly ma obviously needs like pa pa ba bha ma needs uh, lips closing there ma and also is a nasal so basically if you close your nose and try to pronounce this na ya na na ma they won't uh, they won't be pronounced properly because the air needs the passage through nose here okay. so whereas on sha here this uh, 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 this, see, this is a following this anuswara sound is following a uh, so the gap is very short it is not part of a uh. part of a uh is different Th- there is a there is a different sound uh, of a uh. a uh, itself becoming nasal that is a different sound it is a uh, uh, that is a different sound totally but here the anuswara following a uh, following a swara is a different sound uh, uh, like so that is a slow motion but when we say ansha a uh, is beca- not becoming nasal but there is a nasal sound following a uh, ansha uh, so that is the anuswara keep in mind and then the so this anuswara can follow any swara like it can follow a also like then it is represented like Uh, dot on the top of that so uh, 
example okay, I don't remember now yeah you can you can add anything again, again here arms uh, or another thing is like for example mouse mouse means meat so mouse mouse so note that when we say ma what is the ending sound here ending sound the starting sound is ma ma is a consonant which is represented in Devanagari like this this is mas ma mas ma consonant ma venjanam that is the starting sound in this uh, symbol like this is ma and after ma what is the sound following that here when we say ma it is the a sound right so this when we I write this is the Devanagari representation but when you if you want to use English you can write it like say let's say M A A this is one kind one way of writing it or in some scheme or schematics we, we can also write it like small m and cap say this cap uppercase a uh, being the representation of a like dirgha so different uh, you can use your many other scripts also Indian scripts are there you can use that but in Devanagari the writing is like this which make it a little bit compact to write so ma and a so when we when these uh, sounds have to be pronounced together it becomes ma and it is written in Devanagari like this ma so note in this uh, Ma is the starting letter, starting sound, and A is the ending sound. Ma, A. But when we just write it like this, the starting sound is Ma, which is the venjanam, and ending sound is A, which is again a combination of Ma and A. Ma and Ma. So now, when we say Ma, sir, Ma, sir, that there is anuswara there. That Anuswara is following which Swara? Which Swara is it following? Mausa. Ma. Ma. Ah. Ah. Ma. Ah only, not Ma. Because uh, Anuswara is always follows uh, Swara. It doesn't follow Ma. It follows Ah here. Mausa. So that has to be pronounced correctly there. Keep that into keep that in mind like it should not be pronounced as like a mansa not mansa um how they are is it the uh, long r that's following or the short one uh, that's part of the ma uh, sorry say that again please um ma itself is a compound letter right with the r yeah. Yeah. and then we have the r the dead cut Mm -hmm. The the Anuswara is following the um, the ma or the ma. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no. This ma is equal to ma plus uh. a. Mm. Uh huh. And ma is equal to ma plus a. Okay. Okay. This is not equal to ma plus a. Okay. Hmm. Oh, thank you for the clarification. I understand. Okay. So Anaswara is following here. Ma. Ah, Ma. Okay. Um, thank you. Ma, well, sir. Then, uh, yeah. Now, other example is simply Sanskrit. In Devanagari, it is written like this. If you are not familiar with these ones, these scripts, you can practice it. There are other slides we can we'll take a quick look at these also but sanskrit sanskrit the pronunciation here the there is anuswara dot there on the top it is not uh, it is not uh, some it is not sanskrit it is not a sanskrit okay. both are not that it is uh, it is this one 
it is anuswara so in english we might be right some people write it like this right and some people write it like this so this is this one and this is some people write it like sanskrita just like this because there is no equivalent way of writing it in roman script so of anuswara so so we just resorted to writing it with the m or n uh, depending on uh, individual preference but uh, because it is written like that and the people who may not know the anuswara they start actually pronouncing it with the n or m like sanskrit or sanskrit like san like san no coming there but anuswara is the this that sound is uh, following that sa sanskrit sanskrit there is no ma there is no there is no na sanskrit because the sa is following after this uh, anuswara and it, anuswara itself is following a uh, sanskrit uh, acharya one question so some it is also called sanskritam so is it anuswara or uh, the sound ma after the at the end yes uh, at the end it is uh, ma okay. hmm. so this anuswara is not kept hanging at the end the anuswara follows aswara but it is followed by something always always ah okay Uh, which i did not say that because you yeah, will see that but at the end because it has we cannot just uh, say sanskrit and keep the uh, nose open and the uh, um, mouth open it has to close at the end here sanskritam the ma here again this ma itself is a vyanjanam technically again it cannot be pronounced pronounced by definition vyanjanas cannot be pronounced by themselves because they have a uh, swara has to be added so that means there is an element of a uh, short uh, when we say sanskritam however we don't we don't write it like that the pronunciation is like sanskritam yeah we understand that yeah we cannot pronounce vyanjanam by themselves but there is a short half uh, or just a quarter uh, a quarter matra of uh, is there that is understood and we don't write it like sanskritam not not sanskritam it is sanskritam we try to shorten it at the end then uh, visarga no visarga is another sound again visarga is a the sthanam the sthanam for uh, anuswara is nose is a pure nasal sound that you have to no. like we 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 went through the sthanam of other swaras and vyanjana so sthanam for anuswara is nose now visarga is a hissing sound like a ha 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 so is a hissing sound now the visarga also follows a swara it never follows a vyanjanam when we say anuswara doesn't follow the vyanjanam means what does that mean in the examples we saw maas or sanskrita or aunsha aunsha was clear that anuswara is following that a and in maas anuswara is following a and sanskrita anuswara is following a again there because there is a s plus s plus anuswara sanskrita but uh, anuswara never follows a uh, so, uh, vyanjanam for example uh, ka suppose there is this this vyanjanam is there anuswara cannot be added to this vyanjanam anuswara the word itself says anuswara after the swara so if you say want to say kaunsa kaunsa so there is a k and there is a a and then there is a anuswara and there is a sa kaunsa so totally 
in the in writing we can write it like this Devanagari and then but pronunciation is a Kamasa. Now Visarga similarly follows it has to follow uh, uh, Swara never follows uh, Venjanam. So what follows a Venjanam? Why? Uh, swara can follow a Venjanam or another Venjanam call, can follow a uh, Venjanam. But now Visarga follows uh, Swara. Udahranam or example uh, is Hmm. We can say Ramaha, right? Ah. Yeah, today Rama Naomi started with Rama. Yes. Rama. So here, Visarga Ucharanam also is a technique. And uh, one should know how what is the how to say it. So practically when saying it we might deviate here and there depending on what we are saying chanting or Gita or etc or song but however the charam has to be one should know clearly how to say this like now so this is hissing sound where the sthanam is kantha you know his, the air is just coming from the kantha there is no nasal or nose or anything involved here so Rama and here is it is said Visarga is pronounced like a uh, Nishwasa or a what is a Nishwasa in English? Uh, expulsion. Uh -huh, expulsion of air, breathing out. Um, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe out. When uh, Bala Sarpasya Nishwasa means a young or a baby's snake if it makes a hissing sound so that soft and just the air Rama 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 you know, Rama and other other letters can follow it or not follow it doesn't matter unless unlike uh, Anuswara which is followed by something else but here Rama it just at the end it is Visarga. Now Visarga also what is the meaning of Visarga? Anuswara we know the meaning. Anuswara means Anuswara. It follows the Swara. Now it is Visarga which is also called Visarjaniya. Visarga is also called Visarjaniya. Now Visarga some of you might know what is the meaning. Like Sarga. What is the Sarga meaning? Sarga Chiti Pralaya. Sarga you might know or Sarjana. Sarjana you might know. That creation? Hmm, creation. Sarga is also creation. Uh, sarga, Sarjana, creation. Now, V Sarjana means living. Uh, um, yeah, it's like Ganesh Visarjan. <laughs> Ganesh Visarjan, like that, yes. Ganesh Visarjan, um, or uh, meeting Visarjan, it's a male and a Visarjanam Bhavati. So, Visarjanam. So, Visarjanam is like uh, dispersion, yeah. mm -hmm. leaving. So, here we are leaving the, or leaving a, or expels, exp, what do you say in English? Expelling the breath uh, out of the uh, mouth Rama it was just the breath soft breath coming out softly to your mouth Rama Rama or you can add like Rama you can say Karoti whatever. Rama Patu if you, you know the Rama Raksha Rama Patu Rama Patu now what is the there is a ha also right in the sanskritam that uh, we saw here this one ha sound 
So what is the difference between her and the Visarga sound? Uh, ha, ha is coming from the throat and, you know, yeah. is not essentially coming from the throat. It's like more expulsion of the air, but there is, huh. I don't see any base or origin or something. Huh. Yeah, the sthanam for both Visarga and her, the same kantha, and even her is also kantha. So, these three are kantha, and what is the, how do we distinguish them? Now, mainly the confusion happens with the Visarga and her. When we say Rama, when we write it like this, so it, there is a tendency to say, tendency to say Ramaha, Ramaha. When you see the difference there, Rama, Rama, Ramaha. When I say Ramaha, Rama, Rama, the difference is, you, if you notice, when I say Ramaha, there is a vibration in it, which is called a Nada. Which is, there is a vibration in it. Like vibrations, experience, when you pronounce this Dha, Na, Da, where you pronounce this Ta, Tha, the, the, in, the, in your throat, around your muscles, and uh, in the throat, there is no vibration happening here. Whereas in da dha na, there is vibration happening. You can see that vibrating there, like a like a bell. Whereas that that same thing happens in when we say or should happen when you say ha ha. Whereas the visarga, there is no vibration. It is a muted sound. That vibration or the bell like. Uh, waves should not be coming when we say Visarga, Rama, it's just a pure breath. And her is also breath, but no Nada, no Nada there, her, sorry, her is a Nada, the Visarga is not, no Nada. Hmm. So, um, Visarga. So, Visarga and Anuswara both always follow uh, Swara. They never follow Avenjanam. There cannot be Visarga just after Avenjanam like Ka. Yeah. No Visarga. Something has to follow. Ka, A, uh, A, uh, something. Some Swara. Okay. Any question so far? I'll tell you one question. Um, maybe it is slightly off the topic, but you know, when we pronounce Om, uh, it's, it's a combination of A, ah, Om, um, mm. uh, mm. So is it the Ma sound or the Anuswara sound uh, at the mm. end? Mm. It is a Ma sound ultimately because Om is a, like a special sound because it is used in chanting. This Om is just the Om. There is a ma, there is a ma there at the end, but if it is used for this uh, mantra chanting, etc., it is it has to be elongated and it gets many other components in that. I mean, not many others, many other vowels and uh, vinjanas as such, but there are other like, uh, uh, which is a different topic, bindu, shanti, kala, and all that. So they that that has to be elongated, like oh. Like that so, so that that elongation is a different topic so because you need for the chanting effect. But yeah, just if you say Om, there is another not only for chanting. Om is actually a word in Sanskritam, just to say, uh, like when we say you, some of you might have known already, uh, there is Am, Am, Am means okay, saying like okay, agreed. Like that, in, in place of that is we can also say Om. Om is also a word which is used in place of arms for okay, all right. Uh, so this here there is a this Om which is actually that other Om which is used in the chanting. This is just a short or a common word for that Om. Yeah, there is a there is no uh, Anaswara. Okay, go forward.
Now, let's stick to that. Now, these words I started the slide on the slide, which are not, which are all having the er sound added to the venjanam. They they are not compounds, or they are not even having the other swaras here. Just to be simple, so you can practice. You can practice now, but before, yeah, should you practice now? Yeah. You don't want to go uh, the first first line. Pune, first line. Yes. Yeah. Aja. Gaja, Hara, Kara. Okay. Second line, Solis. Haya, Harana, Ramana, ah, uh, Ramana, Karana. Hmm. Hmm. Good. And what is this one? Okay. Haran, <coughs> sorry. Harana. Ah. Bha, bharana. Bharana. Yeah, good. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Next, uh, Subhashri. Bhaya, Harana, Avagamana, Agamana. It's going to read that. Gaman, Patan, Atap, Yama. Huh. One thing here yeah, to notice in uh, Sanskritam, the last ending one uh, has to be pronounced. That ending sound is uh. Okay. So when we pronounce that, it should be pronounced like. Okay, gamana, pana, atapa, yama, yama. Yes, yama. good, good, yama. Hmm. Good. So this is slightly different. Uh, I think that's in a Hindi pronunciation, and not maybe others like Gaman, Patan. So we're not shortening that to here. It has to be oh. now completely. That's the, uh, next one we have. Vijanti. Jamana, Jala, Jalaja, Sakala. Okay. The last one, uh, Nilavan. Kamala, Vana, Vana, Thala, Thalaka. Thalaka. Hmm. Yes, Dhanyamada. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the next one, <coughs> we already talked about this. And uh, before we move forward, let me, I'll show you the book if, I think you might have acquired this or that's, if you're not, that's fine. You can just look at the screen. Now, uh, this book we are going to follow, just a general, uh, how it is organized. So, there is a Parichaya first, Pada Parichaya introduction towards, and the, these are the things we are going to study, near, far, genders, and some of the words for questions. Greetings and the body parts, you can, that is one page, you can just look at that, and then Astinasti, some sentences, some other <coughs> directional words. Uh, then uh, vachana, linga related words, and then the vibhaktis or the declension, sentences using different declensions which are going to follow, and then the verbs. Uh, and some other words, and then there is a numbers, time, how to read the clock, and then more sentences, sentences using vibhaktis and a few other words and the past tense and few other uh, action related words and then few uh, few parts with the sambhashanam or the conversation and some couple of stories so that is the general organization and then we have a chart chart of letters varnamala here mm. Yeah, so this we already saw, and then, yeah, so then we'll start with the Parichaya, but before that, before we start with Parichaya, some more I need to cover 
few more things. Like, uh, hmm. This uh, this also assume you are familiar with this Devanagari. These are the compound letters. As I said before, yeah. pure Vengenum is represented the slant line at the end here, ka, 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 like this, for example. And the swaras, vowels added to these letters are have these symbols like ka, ka, ki, ki, ku, 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 ke, kai, ko, ko. So, uh, so there is an entire chart you can refer. There are available everywhere. Uh, and that's also available in the app. I have shared that with you in the Android app. There are everywhere in the, on the internet or books. You can refer to it. And uh, this, uh, this is already uh, similarly Visarga following a ka ka ke ku ki ku ku like that. All the it can follow any swara. And now it comes to this few more simple words with uh, the other swaras added here. Okay. So let's go again. Pune. First line. Rama, Hari, Neela, Guru. Hmm. Raghu Mahade. Uluka. Pitru, Peya, Jaimini. Hmm. Next one, uh, Solis. I will skip uh, at the moment. You to skip it? Okay. Vijayanti. Okay. Uh, hmm. um, the fourth one, sir. Third one. Hmm. Third one, okay. Uh, Pota, Nauka, Harina Purana Purusha Purana Purusha ah, Purana Purusha will okay. uh, yeah, can also look at the meaning okay next one uh, who read this one what is Vijanti okay. yeah, fourth, fourth one just now you read yeah yeah just now I read the third one so first thing Not there. Okay, Rita, Pagani. Rita. Uh, Rita, hmm. yes. Jagarita, Davanala, Batayana, Nidharika. Hmm, Nidharika. Okay, Nila. Okay. Not there. Jalakupi, Parimala. Kusuma Mala Rama Rama Ramana. Hmm. Last one. Mahasa Bhojan. Mahasa Bhojana Pita Sinha. Yeah. Dhanyavada. So now this one contains <laughs> This one had no, um, and both are similar. Okay, so we'll just quickly for your, if you are interested, the meaning of these words, simple ones. Aja gaja hara kara. Okay. Uh, anybody want to try the meaning if you know? Raghu Um Aja, I don't know. Uh, gaja is elephant. Hara is Shiva, Kara is... Uh -huh. Yeah, Gaja, Elephant, Hara, Shiva, God Shiva, and then Kara. Or it, could be, it could be anybody's name, and the Kara is hand. Hmm. Yeah. A, Aja. Uh, Aja's goat? No. Uh, goat, goat. Goat. Hmm. So, uh, every word has a meaning, meaning in the sense, uh, um, 
some logical etymology to it. But uh, yeah, some of them need more explanation. We'll not go through all that. But Aja is goat. But also Aja means one which is not born. Which Aja A means usually used for negation, and Ja is born. Aja not born, which could refer to uh, uh, Bhagavan Paramatma. Aja. Okay. Ne- is it Next not line. Born huh? or not worn? Born, not born. Okay, so a, a fetus is can be also called Aja? Okay, I um, mean, yeah, it's technically called yes. Aja, no. not at born into this world. Yeah. Okay, but, but it, it exists, but it doesn't, it, it didn't come into the world yet. Yeah, in that sense. And this is the another thing uh, about Sanskritam. We can actually make those words for something on the fly. We are not like uh, um, uh, bound or limited to use one word for certain thing. It, depending on this, as you said now, aja, aja, and you are using it for something unborn baby. Yeah, that is your interpretation, which is accepted and good. And that is Sanskritam, and uh, because you are, you have a logic for that. Uh, that means if we understand the what is the, the, some of the base words and the meanings like the j, uh, uh, like these different. Some of the words we can we can combine them and uh, rearrange them and come up with the different words when we actually do not know what to call a word, call a thing or something. Okay. Uh, like we will come across those such, such things when as we progress further. Okay. Next, okay, higher second line. What is the meaning? Uh, Next, sir. Yeah. Uh, horse, 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 sorry, horse. Huh? Aya. Huh. Aya. Horse. Horse. Hmm. Bharana. Means Pala. Hmm. hmm. Bharana. Means generally fulfilling, supporting. Ramana. Here, huh? Romailo. Sorry, did you say something? Yeah, uh, Romailo, like, I don't know. I'm from Nepal, like, Nepali word is Romailo, Roman means. Rama? Ram? Ramara. Ah, Ramana means what? Romailo. In my my language, is Nepali. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, Rama, I don't. Uh, but Rama here, yeah, Rama, Ramana is uh, enjoying also, or it can be used for somebody who is enjoying. So right now, these are all these words are put in this uh, masculine gender, but they are feeling of the feminine gender and the neutral neutral gender also exist in those forms but these are the sim- simple these are not actually cannot be used directly in the uh, sentence yet these words but these are the like a base words ramana one who enjoys or the enjoying itself can be called ramana and also it can be used for something like a, yeah one who enjoys and the karana 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 we saw that before like sthanam and karanam which karanam is like an instrument. Uh, then the bhaya. Bhaya is fear. Arana. Arana hmm. is eliminating. Ah, eliminating, taking away. Avagamana. Means understanding. Agamana. Hmm. Is that coming? Agamana. Agamana coming. 
only gamana is going uh, gamana is coming so as you see that there are you, you can start noticing this there is a gamana here also gamana here also only the first part is different the prefix part there is our here there is a here the prefix adding the prefix can change the meaning of a word in, a, in sanskritam so there is a word here called gamana means gamana just gamana means going if you add a it means coming then avagamana means understanding and gamana is also here then patana patana means uh, falling falling hmm. atapa atapa is uh, is a uh, is a uh, what do you call the sun no not yeah, sun's heat sun's heat atapa then yama yama is rule ah rule hmm. rule and then damana patience ah patience or suppressing then jala water water hmm. jala ja jalaj one that born in the water yeah one which is born in the water so this not that is again ja is here indicating born here also there is a ja this ja is different ga ja is different but this ja a ja where both the sides the born is there ja a ja means not born ja la ja means which is born in the water which could be anything right whatever is born in the water we can use jalaja not a specific thing so jalaja can be used for what 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 can be born in the water what what yeah fish yeah fish a yeah, fish any kind of fish or uh, this crocodile crocodile is it born in the water no and uh, even the water born flowers yellow flowers yeah especially this is commonly used for lotus jalaja sakala and all. all everything kamala lotus lotus and then vana forest hm forest forest ha uh, phala fruit fruit ha uh, fruit fruit which means result result of some action work that is also phala result fruit fruit of that action not only the fruit of the tree fruit of a tree but the action is phala and phalaka slate hmm slate surface hmm surface board slate surface you so most many of these words have or uh, all the words have these etymologies one example i would like to give you a, a nice one is kama aja we already saw then jala ja we saw then kamala kamala what is kamala kamala is lotus flower why is it called lotus uh, kamala because kam alankaroti iti kamala kam alankaroti kam the ka means jala water ka alankaroti means it uh decorates what is english what is it it increases the beauty it decorates the water when it is in because it is in the water right generally this lotus flower so that is what's called kamal kam alankaroti it beautifies the water these are uh, some examples here one huh? question so mala mala is the human waste Mm. so why is it kamala meaning if you add water and human waste so is mm. it like something like you know the the lotus flower is born out of mud and water like which is kind of equating to human waste i don't, i don't know just well, i not uh, i not come across that interpretation but here the etymology is saying that kam kam is jalam which is water and it uh, alam 
Ala, ala stands for beautifying something. Alam karoti. So that uh, why it is called Kamal. May I ask a question, Mahodaya? Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. This Pala and Palaka, uh, it's just one letter extra, but the, it's completely different, the meaning, okay. right? Right, right. So, so, Pala here is a fruit, but it has also other meanings also. There are multiple okay. meanings for Pala. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, this ka, that pref suffix is a common suffix. We will come uh, across that ka many times. For example, balaka. This is balaka. Hmm. There, there is a word bala also. Balaka means boy okay. or uh, some young person. But uh, bala also means the same thing. Now, this ka is added most of the times to mean the same thing. But hmm. there is a slight uh, difference in the meaning when we add a k with, in different situations. We, we'll see that later. Thank you. Now there is a k, 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 all this, we saw this, we saw this, we saw. And these, these ones we, we don't need to go through this unless you feel that we need to go because I think you know this. We already saw that how the, what, what the, how the mouse, uh, this, what are the, uh, letters in this mouse, uh, this is what it is showing, this slide. So you can go through this uh, in your spare time if you want to. Like, but if ma plus a plus anuswara plus sa, uh, this is what it is, right? Mouse. So similarly, this is trying to break this chashaka into individual component letters there. Cha plus a uh, plus sha plus a uh, plus ka plus aha. Uh. Note that whether you write it like this, <coughs> actually this aha is again actually a plus aha, a plus visarga, a plus ah, that visarga sound, which again cannot be pronounced independently, it needs a swara before it. Now, whether you write it like this, whether you write it like this, the pronunciation is same. This is just for our understanding, writing like this. Whether you write, suppose instead of writing like, the right, like this, in, without using this plus, if you write continuously like this, right? one after another, ch, a, uh, sh, a, uh, ka, a, uh, and visarga. Then how do we say this? We will try. We can try to say ch, uh, but actually ch cannot be said. Right? It cannot be said by itself. Then a uh, is really needed to say that. Then we have to say it ch. Cha, similarly, sha, ka. So these cannot be pronounced independently. So whether you write it like this, this is just a lippy or the script uh, writing representation. So whether you write it like this or write it like this, it, the pronunciation will remain the same. Chashaka, and then this is, yeah, you can practice it. This is, what is this? Mm. Yeah, Rita, what is this? So, second line. Clash. Hmm? Sorry. So, cha ka ka. So, cha ka ha. This is E. Oh, sorry. So, cha ka meaning uh, tailor. Oh, so. Oh, no. One of source. So the meanings we'll see when we in the next class of some words will take up. But these are just related to this consonant conjunct letters. Now conjunct letters, these are the one where multiple. Uh, this again a script related, nothing to do with the language itself. But this is just a Devanagari script where uh, multiple consonants are uh, added, coming one after another. For example, this one, k and wa coming after and one another and there is a o also at the end so it is written like this whether you write it like this write it like this saying is the same thing but devanagari many times you find it written like this saying that kwa and this is kra this is dia tia gna ta dma rma kshra tra jnya shra so some special notations are in devanagari if you want to get familiar with 
that not, those notations we can which are available on this uh, slide set so uh, I believe you ha all have access to this slide set right the slides um, where can I get access to this yeah. so this one is available on our study page if you go to this website marshabodha.com you go to this classes and then at the bottom there is student serial link to go there you can you can bookmark this page directly in your browser so there here um, so this is here Sanskrit L1 course slides okay so this is the to go page which, which I'll keep updating up to every class this is the slide you can find here slide set and this is a class recording will be posted to this YouTube play playlist individual individual links will be here but if you want to enter playlist and there's a homework link here this is on the right side. this left side but left side uh, table is for the other class going this is for the current class okay, we'll stop here then you are namaskar namaskar